Guys, so here we are with chapter seven, and the first thing I need to do is fix a mistake from uh, from chapter six. And that mistake, um, I believe someone pointed out, was I did not add the interest rate to one of my checks um, that I paid off. So there's a couple of those. I'm looking in the book right now to see which one it was. It could have been on one on, looks like one sixteen nineteen. It was a payment to community bank. So I'm gonna look at my reports and try to find that payment to community bank. Now to find that payment, I could go to, um, I'm gonna go to my journal and see if I can't find it from there. So I'm logged in, go to my journal and see if I can't find it. So here was a journal entry. That's not it. Here's one, there's a notes payable. That's not it. This is 1800. I'm looking for a transaction that was $12,000 on one 16 of 19. That's not it. I mean, I'm not sure if it's the one 16 of 19. I want to give it a try. All right, so those aren't it. So if it's a reported payment to community bank, a new vendor to retire an existing notes payable, let me do something else. If I can't find it there, let me go to transactions. To find my transactions, I'm gonna to go to reporting. And this was in case two. So I'm gonna to go to my custom reports. I'm gonna to go to my transaction detail, case two and I'm gonna find the check that I wrote. And again, this check was $12,000, this one right here for Community Bank. So I'm gonna look at this check. And yes, I did not have the uh, interest. So I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna add interest here. Interest expense, $300. And then I should be good to save. Awesome. Now I'm gonna exit that out. And I'm actually I'm gonna go back to reports. And I'm gonna to go to customer reports. I'm gonna do transaction three and make sure I did that one. Or case three, I should say. And make sure I did that one. See if I can't find which one it was. It was in the amount of $23,000 on $117. So I'm looking for $117, $23,300. This is the check. So I'm pretty sure that one's good to go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. $23,300, and that's what it should have been. $23,300 is the total. 23,000 for the notes payable and 300 for the uh, intro, or interest. All right, so now I think we're pretty good to go. I think that was the only mistake I made. I might have made another one. Um, but I think that's it. So we're gonna start chapter seven and that is payroll. So to start payroll, I'm gonna to go to the practice. That's on page. One twenty eight is where it starts. Case one starts on page one twenty nine. So it says the first thing I need to do though, actually, I'm to my dashboard, we'll change this to case one. There we go. Keyboard didn't want to work. Case one, student's name, save. Number one says, add two new accounts like you did in, the, did in the chapter, payroll expense and payroll tax payable. All right, so if I'm gonna be adding two accounts, I'm gonna to go to uh, accounting, chart of accounts, and then new, 
And then the first one is going to be a, should be an expense. Detail type should be payroll expense. There we go. And the default name is payroll expense. And this just says payroll. But because I want to make sure I know that it's an expense, I want to keep a payroll expense. And I just need to save and close. The other one I'm going to make is payroll tax payable. So I'm going to go to new. Scroll down here to liability. And it shouldn't be a long-term liability. It should be a current liability. And then payroll tax payable, click on that, save and close. All right. Number two says add a new employee, Ben Franklin. So if I want to go to employees, I'm going to go to workers, employees. Um, add a new employee. Um, I don't want to turn on payroll. Um, I don't need to, to add that functionality, I don't think. So I'm going to go to the first name is Ben. Last name, Franklin. And what other information does it give me? It gives me his address, 32 Ocean View Lane. The city is in La Jolla. State is California. The zip code is 92037. Social security number. It doesn't even ask for the social security number on here. Employee ID number, employee ID, hire date, date of birth. It asks for all of that, but it does not ask for the employee's social security number. So I Without a place to put it, I'm not going to put it on there. And I shouldn't have a problem with that. Click save. There's Ben Franklin. Number two says Betsy Ross. Add an employee. Do not turn on payroll yet. BET. S-Y, last name Ross, the address is going to be 2323 First Street, and that town is La Jolla, California, zip code is 92037. Save. All right. Number four says payroll is twice a month on the 17th and the last day of each month. Payroll, record payroll as you did in the chapter for 1 17 18 based on the information shown in figure uh, 7 14 after recording each employee check. Please be sure to designate it as a recurring transaction. So to do this, we set up the employees. We're not paying them through the payroll function in QuickBooks. We're paying them with a check. So I'm going to go here to create and then check. And so here's my check. So this is case two. So I'm going to change this to case one because that's a checking kind of paying for. And it says record them for 117 of 18. So change this to 1, 17 of 18. All right, and my payee, my first one is going to be Ben. Drop down menu, scroll down. All the way down, I see Ben. The first account is going to be payroll expense. And this amount is going to be 3958.33. The next expense is going to be payroll taxes payable. It's a liability. So I'm looking down here for my liabilities. Liability 
long-term liability, nope, current liability is payroll, here we go. And this is the employee portion, 845.11. And then we have the employer portion of payroll, which for us is also a payroll expense. In the amount of 302.82. And it is the payroll taxes payable. Payroll taxes payable in the amount of three hundred two eighty-two. Now, something to keep in mind that I forgot to do up here. This is a negative number, and this eight hundred five is a negative number. So we have the thirty-nine fifty-eight thirty-three, which is positive. This is how much we're writing the checkout for. We're going to take out of it the employee withholdings, and then we're going to put in the employer portion of the holdings because we're going to pay that ourselves, and then we take it out, the employer portion of the holdings for the same amount. All right, so now that we're done, it wants us to be sure to designate it as a recurring transaction. Now, to, re to dedicate it as a recurring transaction, we need to go down here and click on make recurring. And then it wants us to do the interval. Um, and see what it tells us on here. Play check to be sure it doesn't need a recurring transaction. Template as you created above to help you record payroll as you did in the chapter for 131 based on the information. Record payroll as you did in the chapter based on the information shown in figure. After recording each employee check, be sure to designate it as a recurring transaction. So we're going to do this one as unscheduled. And we're going to do this as unscheduled because we want to be able to select when we do it. Um, if we just did this on the first day of every month, We'd have to do and do another one. Um, we don't need to schedule it. We need to do it as unscheduled, so that it's just here and we can go back in and edit it anytime. Save template. We're good to go. So that was that was Ben. Now we need to do Betsy Ross. So to do Betsy Ross, we're going to go to create check. Um, changes to case one, payee is Betsy Ross, the date is 117, correct? Yep, 117.18. All right, first account is going to be payroll. Payroll expense is going to be 156950. The next one is going to be payroll taxes payable. All right, this is going to be a negative number negative 33509. The next is payroll expense again. This is the uh, employer's portion, and that's going to be 120.07. And then payroll taxes payable. Payroll taxes payable of negative 120.07. Awesome. So we got those done. Dates right. We're going to go to down here and make recurring. We're going to do it unscheduled. We're going to save template. All right. Use the recurring transaction template you created above to help you record payroll as you did in the chapter for 131.18 based on the information shown. So now we need to record payroll for 121.18 using what we've just done here. So 
what I want to do is create check. And then once I get here, I can go, I should be able to go to more. No. Oh. Hmm. I need to bring on the template. So I'm going to change this to checking account one. I'm going to click on my Ben Franklin. And man, it should bring up my template. Why does it not bring up my template? Order checks. Let me go back to the practice or to the instructions. Pay employees. Record payments. Create the check. Payroll taxes. Make recurring unscheduled save template. Gear icon. Recurring transactions. Ah, that's what I did wrong. I want to exit this check. Yes, I want to leave. Gear icon. Uh, 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 recurring transactions. All right, so now to pay uh, Ben again, I'm going to click on this use. And there we go. The only thing I need to do now is to change the date to 1.31 of 18. And then this should be the same. Um, it's going to be the same because we're saying that they're working the same hours. So now that I changed this date, I got the right checking account that was selected. I should be able to go to save and new. All right, I'm going to exit out of that one. I'm going to go back to my recurring transactions. We got Betsy Ross. I'm going to click on it. And the date's already there because I just changed it in the last transaction. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save and do that. All right, so that was me doing it for 131 of 2018. Number seven says, open your previously customized report, name, trial, balance. Uh, your report should look like this, yada, yada, yada. So from here, we are ready to simply uh, print off your uh, reports and submit for grading. Um, to do this, we're going to do what we've done every other time. Go to reports, custom reports, if you save them as a custom report. Uh, trial balance case one. We're going to export PDF. We're going to save PDF as. It's going to open that up. I'm going to click off of this. I'm going to go to back to report list. Transaction detail by account for case one. Export as PDF, export PDF. Save as PDF. Here we go. So the first one I'm gonna look at is the trial balance. And, well, if I were to turn my trackpad on, it is on. Don't know why it's being difficult. Um, so here you have the trial balance. Um, you have our balance for checking, cash, everything else here. So stop the video here if you want to look at it and make sure that you're right before we move on. And then we'll go to transaction detail by account. So for this transaction detail by account, um, this is all for case one. So every transaction that we've done for case one should show up on here. Um, it might, it should show up in this order, but it might vary based on, um, how many accounts you set up and what you name them all. Um, so here's, we have the first page and the second page and the third page for whatever reason, when I scroll down, that's what it comes up as. So pause the video wherever you need to, to make sure you got your balances right. And that's it for, uh, the chapter seven. Case one.